Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Monday, December 3rd, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about an offer that, quite frankly, Amir Khan, in my opinion, should accept. And it's to fight Terrence Crawford. We'll talk about it. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow... <laughs> can't believe I'm blowing my own intro. The opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me also say too that I had to prioritize some family matters on Saturday night, so I was unable to watch the Tyson Fury Deontay Wilder fight live. That fight's going to be replayed in a matter of days on Showtime, a service I have, right? So, to be fair to the fighters, and I'm aware of how the fight's been reported, right? And I'm obviously not happy with the draw outcome, especially as a hedge better. But be that as it may, I will give you my analysis on that fight after I have an opportunity to watch the fight, review the fight, etc., Okay, so I'll get to that video next week. But let's talk about Terrence Crawford and let's talk about Amir Khan. Let me just say, I personally don't believe that Crawford, who I consider to be one of the very best in the sport of boxing, can beat Manny Pacquiao. Because Pacquiao is just simply too fast, right? And Pacquiao is too Sudden. Keep in mind, too, Crawford is a guy who, when given time, can switch from southpaw to orthodox to southpaw and things like that. That's when he's given time. Against a fast-handed guy like Manny Pacquiao, I don't believe he would be given time. And since Pacquiao is a natural southpaw, since Pacquiao knows how to deliver a straight left suddenly, with power, since Pacquiao himself used to be a knockout puncher, right? I really think that Crawford would find himself in a battle that would be harder for him than, let's say, a fight against Mikey Garcia, who Crawford beat as an amateur, or Errol Spence, who doesn't have Manny Pacquiao-level hand speed. Now, one of the few guys in boxing who does is Amir Khan. Now, let's be clear on Khan, because I think people think his career has been more up and down than it has been. We all remember his loss to Lamont Peterson. And let's be clear, that fight has some problems with it. Right? The fight's in Peterson's backyard. Amir Khan comes out fast. That fight officially is a split decision. Many people feel that Amir Khan got robbed. Also, Peterson later was found to have been taking, not necessarily the night of that fight, but Peterson apparently had been taking testosterone boosters. I would encourage people to Google that and figure out whether he had a valid prescription for them for a real medical issue or whether he was taking them to enhance his performance. Right? For legal reasons, I'm not going to reach an opinion on that here in this video. But what I want you to do is to do your research. Let's just say Amir Khan's loss to Peterson in Peterson's backyard wasn't an outcome that, to me, is above reproach, right? We can debate that. His loss to Danny Garcia, let's be clear on it. He comes out, he's beating up Danny Garcia. He's dominant. Guess what? Amir Khan, with all the hand speed, doesn't move his head. His head is there to get hit. Also, Amir Khan doesn't have the best chin. If you hit him hard enough, he's 
done. So Danny Garcia caught up with Amir Khan. Unfortunately, that's how many people think about Khan's career. Those Danny Garcia highlights with Garcia dropping him. Khan looking hurt, disoriented, finished. Well, the only other fight since then, <clears throat> and it's choking me up, the only other fight since then that Amir Khan has lost was a fight where, in my opinion, he was dominating the fight. Simply too fast for the other guy. And then the other guy, a puncher. Saul Alvarez was able to land a right hand and close the show. Without that big punch, had the boxing match continued, right? In my opinion, American would have won that fight by lopsided decision. So those are really American's three blemishes since 2011. Understand, the Danny Garcia fight took place in 2012, right? Lamont Peterson, 2011. Then we get the Saul Alvarez fight in 2016. So here is Khan in 2018 being offered $5 million by Terrence Crawford's promoter, Top Rank. Now, I personally feel Terrence, over time, is going to solve the puzzle in part because... Amir Khan doesn't move his head enough. Amir Khan's a speed guy. He really can't move his upper body from the waist. Right? He can move away from you, but his whole body has to move. I believe against a Terrence Crawford, a guy at the top of the game, those deficiencies are going to catch up with Amir Khan. But what I want people to do is to think about the possibility, and Khan needs to think about the possibility. That Khan's hand speed is simply too much. Right? There is a possibility against a master boxer, right, who can sit down on his punches, as Jeff Horn found out the hard way in getting stopped by Terrence Crawford. There is the possibility that Crawford, who had a problem against Yorkeese Gamboa, Another very fast-handed guy. There is the possibility that Amir Khan comes out and is just simply too fast. And that you don't get what you just got in the Deontay Wilder fight. Right Again, I haven't seen the fight. But according to reports, Deontay Wilder drops. Tyson Fury in the ninth round drops him again in the twelfth round. What happens if you don't get to the drops part of the fight? What happens if Crawford valiantly tries to catch up with Amir Khan and Khan is able to be on his bike? <clears throat> Khan figures out that he needs to deal in the world of length, not engagement. He needs to give up the idea of walking down Terrence Crawford. That's what costs him against Danny Garcia. The fast start probably cost him two against Lamont Peterson. If you're gifted with hand speed and you're a little stiff and robotic, if you have hand speed and you're not defensively blessed, your head is stiff, you can't bend it sideways and stuff like that. If your balance is, stuff, is such where you're upright, you're not a guy who, you know, can... Just bend sideways and use that while throwing punches to throw off your opponent, right? If your angles tend to be the same, in other words, Saul Alvarez sees you the first round, says, man, this guy's fast, sees you the second round. By the fifth round, Alvarez is thinking, man, this guy's in the same place, isn't he? Right? I know this guy's about this far from me. If I can just plan this counter, I'm going to catch him naked. If you're a guy who's blessed with hand speed, but you're prone to be caught naked, 
what happens if we don't ever get to the naked part of the fight? Right? Vladimir Klitschko. Never got to the naked part of the fight against Tyson Fury. Right? Fury started fast, had the movement, had him baffled. He never got close enough to Fury to knock Fury down. Right? Deontay Wilder was able to get close enough to Fury to knock him down, but even that took, what, nine rounds. So understand, I know there's a Kel Brook fight out there, and I understand. These grudge match fights, these rivals in your own country, in your weight class, wow, those fights could be huge, right? Chris Eubank, Nigel Benn. I'll agree with that. But I think the boxing cognoscente, the boxing hardcore, the people who look at boxing and who have a top 10 pound for pound list, who know who the top fighters are, who understand who Terrence Crawford is, right, folks? He wasn't unified. He was undisputed at 140. Right? Jeff Horn beats Manny Pacquiao, doesn't make it to the final bell against Terrence Crawford. Right? Crawford runs into Errol Spence someplace. The two guys have words. Errol Spence says, you're easy work. Terrence Crawford points to Spence's midsection and basically tells Spence, I'm not buying it, you're flabby. You're not the athlete I am. You're not in the shape I'm in. Have your people call my people. I'll accept the deal. Right? Terrence Crawford, quite frankly, is a guy who's a bad man. Who thinks he is the B-E-S-T at 147 pounds. And I got news for the Americans of the world. Many people believe. Many that Terrence Crawford is the best at 147 pounds. I've talked to folks who say, why is Mikey Garcia even fighting Errol Spence? Why doesn't he fight Terrence Crawford? You know why that fight's not happening. Because these guys fought as amateurs. Bad experience for Mikey. One he apparently remembers. Well, if you're Amir Khan and you're in your early 30s, and people are looking at your career and they're saying, yeah, you know, he had some big wins, but with that hand speed and that offensive game, I thought he would do better. Right? I thought the big names on his resume would be bigger than Devin Alexander and Chris Algieri. Right? When he stepped up against unbeaten Danny Garcia, he got beaten. When he stepped up against Canelo... He had the hand speed advantage. He knew Canelo's only shot was to catch him. How did he get caught in the first half of the fight, no less? So this is Amir Khan's shot at redemption. I know the people in the UK are saying, hey, can he beat Cal Brook? Look, player, go for the world title. <laughs> right? <laughs> You're in your... Early 30s, you're not a heavyweight. In other words, you don't age as slowly as heavyweights age. Right? This isn't a weight class where guys are competitive when they're as old as Luis Ortiz is right now. Your game is speed. Right? You, you understand that speed might not age well. You're getting an offer to fight one of the very best in the sport, a guy who's unbeaten. You beat him, we'll always remember that accomplishment. You beat Terrence Crawford, and when they start talking about Amir Khan, mention of that fight is going to be in the first paragraph. Right? For me, it's a no-brainer. I understand that Kell Brook fight has a long history of negotiation. 
right? There has to be a reason why the two guys haven't jumped in the ring yet, right? You have a real offer on the table. It's for real money from a real promoter, top rank, against a real opponent. Right? You need to have your lawyers take a look at the contract and then, quite frankly, if they say to you, looks legit to us, you need to sign it. After you sign it, you can ask other questions like, where's the fight taking place? <laughs> right? And stuff like that. But as long as it's three minutes around, as long as it's a 12-round fight, with Terrence Crawford's title at stake, I think Amir Khan has to take this deal. He'll be too fast. Too fast for Terrence Crawford for at least the first four rounds. The question is whether Crawford can then turn into Saul Alvarez and close the show after that. Right? Hopefully, Amir Khan has looked at his own films and realizes that he can't hang in the pocket as long as he did against Danny Garcia and Lamont Peterson, right? Get on your bike, stick and move, use length, throw a jab, use distance, right? Flurry, move away from him. You do that for 12 rounds, you might just end up with his title and a hell of a lot more respect from the boxing public. That's how I see it. If I had to pick a winner, I'd pick Crawford, but let's just say this is a difficult fight, depending on the odds, right? If I see odds where Amir Khan is getting three to one or four to one and stuff like that, I might just take Khan in the fight with Crawford by KO. Right? I really do feel that if a boxing match breaks out here, even though Crawford is a master boxer, I really feel that Khan is just too fast for him. This is not Ricky Burns. Right? This is a guy with hand speed who, if he keeps the fight in the middle of the ring and just moves around, think Ezra Charles against Rocky Marciano. If he just circles in the middle of the ring, works a jab, throws combinations, stays away from Crawford, doesn't allow a fight to break out, keeps it a boxing match. I think Khan, who has won belts in multiple weight classes, right, has a real shot here. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.